Good afternoon guys, it is November 1st, the day after Halloween, and today I'm making a video for you guys because I want to go after something a little bit different today, talking about vlogging. Now if you guys don't know, I originally had a channel that was just random vlogging stuff and I would talk about camera stuff on there, I'd talk family stuff on there, I'd do like some Casey Neistat typey things, uh, you know, just having fun playing around with cameras. Eventually I realized I was into cameras so much that I separated the two channels and I have this channel, you're watching this on now, and there's another channel that sometimes I get committed to and sometimes I don't. But recently I wanted to get back committed to the daily vlog or some type of three to four day a week vlog, just short snippets of my life and I wanted to just kind of have them there for documentary reasons as I uh, do stuff with my kids and my family and that kind of stuff. In order to do that, I have my Panasonic G9, which I'm filming this on right now, and that was about it. The problem with this camera for that type of stuff is it's it's actually fairly big, right? Any kind of DSLR, pro body camera type thing is actually fairly big. And so carrying that around all the time, it just draws a lot of attention. It's not, um, it's not compact enough. When you have kids, you're carrying things, that kind of stuff. So typically a lot of daily vloggers will shoot on point and shoot cameras. The question today is, do you need a point and shoot camera when you have your iPhone or your Android phone in your pocket? So for today's video, we're gonna be comparing, be comparing I can't talk. We're gonna be comparing two different options. On my right hand here, we've got the Canon. I just turned it on, didn't I? I'm so sorry. We've got the Canon SX740HS. This is a one over 2.3 inch sensor. Uh, it does shoot 4K. It does have a flip up screen, no mic input, um, and it, it is pocketable. Now the reason why I went with this over like a G7X Mark III or an RX100 Mark V or whatever, is because those start approaching the thousand dollar mark, 750, 850, and at that point, that's that's not something you really want to toss around, and just beat the crap out of, and have with you just for random, you know, uh, daily vlogging stuff. Although I will say, between the two options, when I compare today, those might be better options, perhaps. So, right hand SX740 HS. Let me set that down right there. On the left hand, oh, my left pocket, it's my iPhone 10R. Now you can have a 10s, 10s Max, you can have the new iPhone 11, 11 Pro, or whatever it might be. And with this, I'm gonna go with this two, one of two ways. As is, like you did nothing with this phone, just took it and started shooting with it. Or if you added a couple accessories, and the couple accessories I have to make this a bit better is one for the audio side. I have the Shure MV88 mic, and then I have the audio clip wide angle lens. Now of course you can also do the moment lenses, you can do the Sandmark lenses. Um, but these are a little bit cheaper. They get a couple different lenses for 100 bucks versus like the moment lenses, 120 bucks just for the wide angle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little stroll down my street with each variant and let you guys compare. And the reason why I'm doing that is for a couple reasons. One, for audio and wind noise. Two, for stabilization. And then we'll do some autofocus checks along the way. So let's hop on the SX740 and see how it looks. Okay, so this is the SX740. I have got the stabilization turned on. It does have stabilization, and actually it's pretty good. Um, as you can see, I'm walking right now, and it seems to be doing a decent job smoothing out all the little micro jitters and, and stuff like that. There is no mic input, as I mentioned, so um, any kind of work with putting mics would have to be done in post. Now, one thing I will say with the audio on this, and I think they did it on the G7X Mark III as well, is they recessed the speaker so it doesn't get that wind howling noise as easily, but I would still recommend some dead cats. I don't have dead cat on top of this, so, you might be getting some wind noise, maybe not. It's not too bad out right now, but it is possibly getting some wind noise. Other thing I should mention is with this sensor, um, the one over 2.3 inch sensor, is you don't get a lot of shallow depth of field. And it's also not great in low light. I can't do a low light test for you right now because it's sunny out. And the lens fastest aperture is 3.3. So not fantastic for low light and also for depth of field. So how's it look right now? I got it on face tracking, I'm shooting 1080p. Uh, I'm not shooting 4K, I never do any of my videos in 4K. So I don't wanna do that here. They, it is capable of 4K. Um, I can tell you when I was playing with it, it wasn't the crispest, if that's the word, the crispiness, crispest 4K there is. But it works. So how's the 1080? How's the autofocus? Is it keeping me? How long does it take to refocus on my face? What was interesting when I was playing with this in the Best Buy local to my house, it actually seemed to focus a little bit faster than the G7X Mark III or Mark II. So that's interesting. 
Uh, in terms of colors, I have it on natural profile. It doesn't have anything that um, is really like flat for grading, unless you put it in natural and like desaturate and decontrast everything. But overall, for daily vlogging, running gun stuff, how's it look? How's it work? Now let me take this video and hop over to the iPhone and let's do a comparison. Okay, so here's the iPhone. I am using the rear facing camera because it is the higher quality of the two. Um, and I'm just walking and talking, same thing here. I have no uh, mic, no windscreens on, any of that kind of stuff. And I'm just walking and talking the same way. Again, same thing here, tiny sensor. Um, so depth of field is not something you're gonna get, but for vlogging, how does it look? I'll say the one thing about the iPhone is this. When you have it in just normal format like this, it just looks like you're making a Snapchat or a TikTok or Instagram video, whatever. The problem with this is, is you use the rear facing camera, I can't tell what's going on around me. I have no idea if the lens is focused on my face. If I tilt it down like this or tilt it up, it's very easy to make the mistake. So, uh, oh, also using the native app, not using the Filmic app or the Moment app, none of that stuff, just the native app itself. How's it sound? How's it look? How's it compare? We pause this and I'm now going to attach the lens and the microphone. Okay, now here is the audio clip wide angle lens. It's probably a lot more um, scenery you can see behind me. And I'm very confident I'm in focus or, or in the frame right now because there is such a wider field of view. I'm also using the Shure MV88 mic. Now, I didn't play with any of the gain control or any of the directional settings, so there's adjustments that can be made there to this microphone. Again, I'm using the built-in iPhone app. Um, start playing around with some filmic stuff or some moment lenses. Oh, this big gust of wind just picked up. I bet you, uh, I wonder, is it picking up the wind noise? It's super windy right now. I'm fairly certain on the, here, we take the mic off, see what happens with this. All right, I took the mic off. Of course, the wind died down. But are you guys getting wind noise? Is it picking up across the speakers and howling? If I click this on, does it get better? <clears throat> Uh, not sure what happened there. My iPhone freaked out, so there's there's that whole thing. But basically, take the last two clips I just showed you guys, um, where we have the SX740 versus the iPhone as is versus the iPhone with the mic and the audio clip. I was gonna try and like remove the mic and plug the mic back in and show like a direct comparison of the microphone only. That didn't work. That didn't work. So what do you guys think? Four hundred dollars for the SX740. That's what it costs new from Best Buy, or I think it's $200 total, or 250 total for the MV88 plus the audio clip. Or maybe just the mic alone's worth it. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. What's the best combination for some run and gun daily vlogging where you're not looking uh, really obvious? All right, thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget, please subscribe to my channel. I would appreciate it. Um, I just crossed over the 500 subscriber mark, which is amazing. Need to get to a thousand, which would open up the monetization side of things. Not that I'm necessarily doing it for that, but it would just make this more interesting. Oh my gosh, the sun just came out. Wow, oh, I can't see. Okay, you guys have a fantastic day, evening, morning, night, whenever you're watching this, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.